Where are the goblins assembled? Mm -hmm. Ah, Pulsifer's here, yes. The others will arrive shortly. Mm -hmm. Pulsifer will get it. Weevil Schnotwell will do it. Hmm? Yay, gobble, gobble. Yeah, yeah. Gobble, yes, gobble. yes, we know your name. Uh, yes for you, no for Gobble. Go, 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 yo, bo. What? What are all you weaklings doing here? Your soft heads, you need to wear the helmet. I've got a hard head master. I will do your bidding. I think his head will end up on the spike next. Your head will end up on the spike next. Who stole the Lord of the Rings figure sword? It was me, Vigorous Rex. He can cross genres. Oh, he can cross genres. He can cross genres, master. I don't even know what a genre is. Mm, that's because your puny brain's caught in that helmet. It can't grow to the goblin size it should be. Oh, I tripped and fell over a dice. Enough of this. I brought you here. Success. Oh, shit. I fell again. The humans left out banana peels. I'm getting old. <laughs> I'm getting all. Oh, this is why I've called you all here to name a successor to the war band. Yeah, we need a new leader. Oh, I do. <laughs> Listen! Oh, but you just said. Listen! Oh. Breaking with goblin tradition, I've decided to, instead of the traditional uh, mud wrestle to the death. Let's fight! No! <laughs> Cease this prattle. I, you, I will have you take this, uh, this here constant cold flame of the Lilliputians and bring it to me that I might warm my deathbed. And afterwards, you can do whatever you want. I won't be here and I don't care. But he was just like Roth right there. Why didn't he just grab it? Because then we wouldn't have nothing to do to prove ourselves. What's that? You'll question my judgment. It wasn't Pulsifer. It was Weevil! Weevil. It was not! Weevil. Weevil! Weevil, snot will, snot won't! I snot will! This is unacceptable. Well, I can't, I, I, I need tissue. a moment to rest. My back is out of alignment. So is his actual alignment. What? It claims to be chaotic I, I heard good. that. I heard, you know that it can't be king, but being at least neutral. What say you, Pulsifer? Shall we grab the flame? Prove our loyalty to the Lord and Master Slagfunk. Are you proposing? What am I? A am dual rulership. Uh, yeah, yes, uh, yes. You've got the armor and I've got the brains. Mm. They have no articulation, Pulsifer. We can uh, attack them at our leisure. And Weevil only has one weapon. Weevil only has one. I have three. You have more than two because they're oversized. Two two-handed weapons with only two hands. Two, yes. Dual monkey grips. Oh. Uh, <laughs> we are the mightiest goblins, King Slagfunk. <laughs> Possible. With our articulation, we will be able to scale these walls without any assistance at all. But, but how will we? How will we climb? With How? our hands full of weapons. Wait, uh, must I do all your thinking for you? You use the weapons to climb! <sighs> Watch, observe King, as we uh, uh, lay waste to the tiny impusions. Yeah. <laughs> oh, out of the way. <laughs> Why don't we just live here? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> what? Come on, just playing with goblins. With goblins on WebDM. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by 2C Gaming and their TPK Bestiary Volume 2 for 5th Edition. This book has over 100 new monsters that are almost exclusively CR10 and up with tons of lore, tactics, and new mechanics to make them fun and easy to use. They all get extensively playtested to guarantee a great time. And if you want it really tough, each monster set has at least one individual monster designed to down a couple of characters, you know, for fun. And if that doesn't convince you, then how about this? We are writing for this book. Three monster sets are being designed by members of WebDM, and we can't wait to show you the crazy stuff we dreamed up. But the Kickstarter has to fund for us to do it, so go ahead and back it. Link here or in the comments and description. All right, Jim, yeah. well, let's focus through the gobble list. <laughs> yes. Goblins. <laughs> goblins. We're gonna talk about go now. Here, like, why the hell would we talk about goblins? Almost five years into WebDM. I mean, yeah, you know, we've kind of talked about it before. We right? have, right? Yeah. So if you're looking for more of a player-focused show, yeah, 
The, we have a whole goblinoids with hobgoblins and bugbears. Yeah, this that, is, was, that was that was from Volos. Yeah, yeah, more folks, more Volos. Focused. Yeah, yeah. And we did do an, an old video back in the days Gosh. of WebDM covering five subjects in six minutes. Yes, there was one uh, of those back in the WebDM Express days. <laughs> um, in our but. In the WebDM cinematic universe. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah. You know. That was the short yeah. that kicked it off, <laughs> and now this is the feature length uh, thing. But I think it's worth pointing out, or to, to yeah. kind of dive deep into goblins, because yeah. they are so used. And while some might yes, think yeah. that that's like, oh, they're cliche, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. there's a, I think there's a reason why goblins are so ubiquitous, right? I mean, Certainly, yeah, yeah. And and we are talking about goblins more as the monster from a DM perspective. Maybe you've read a certain Kotaku article about how goblins are boring and goblin fights are boring and the like. And while that article raises a lot of good points, uh, it doesn't necessarily go into uh, uh, as deep as you could to sort of like figure out what in the world can you do to make this staple of low-level gaming and Dungeons and & Dragons and the like. Mm -hmm. um, inject it with, with a bit of fear and a bit of wonder and a bit of awe and, and not dumb it down. Because goblins, to me, even more than kobolds, right? Like kobolds have that uh, the reputation through Tucker's kobolds and mm -hmm. and sort of like the craftiness of them. They've, they've got the association with, association with dragons that came in in uh, third edition, and and so they they have an identity. I think kobolds do, whereas goblins outside of um, I don't know maybe the Pathfinder, Rise of the Rune Lords, or something like that. Goblins have this sort of boringness. To them, I think well, they're that, just like scrawny orcs. Kind yeah, of, yeah, kind they're, of, they're, sort of right, but, but they're small and scrawny, and, and they they they're probably your first like humanoid combat encounter outside of a swarm of rats or something like that, or bandits or bandits maybe. Yeah, and and so in that sense, they're they're part of a perfunctory and bloodless. Uh, in you know tutorial combat, and they're goblins, right? They're wimpy and scrawny and stupid, and they're not the creatures that that they could be, right? They, yeah. the goblin to me represents that uh, the, sort of the fear of the dark, right? The fear of of dark places, the fear of of something uh, sneaking up on you in the night, uh, something the particularly if it's small, you know, it's it's easy to be afraid of something larger than you, something that's going to overpower you, like say a bugbear, right? Like yeah, yeah. bugbear is a has a very complicated and and really fascinating etymology, and you can sort of see where. Eventually, you follow it back long enough, and Bugbear starts to have connotations of like Scarecrow, of a thing yeah, that, yeah. that's meant to terrify and uh, you know and keep things away. That's easy to see. They're they're big, but the Goblin is, is small. It can get places that you can't. Mm -hmm. It can be places uh, where you think you're safe because it's gotten in there. Um, and then it, it you know there's all other kinds of connotations because of just their association with fairies and. Uh, and like um, that I think is erased whenever you get to the kind of categorization and mechanization and, and, and the like that Dungeons and Dragons by necessity has to do in order to gamify fictional elements. It's got to like codify and define. Right, right. You know? And therefore, uh, in some people's minds, that can become static. Like yes. they are locked into yeah. this box. But mm -hmm. like yeah. you said, goblins are just like, a reflection of, of what people used to believe. I mean, they, sure, yeah. they, they believed all these different... So what does that more say about us, really? Like, <laughs> right? I mean, right, yeah. Because in our folklore, <laughs> we, we we usually instill, like, certain qualities in these these mm -hmm. fairy or, you know, beasts sort of the of woods. Creatures, right, yeah. Uh, so, like, you know, looking at it from reality, yeah, and, yeah. Know, like dark in medieval times and all that. There's the fear of it. There, There's the sort of a sense of wonder and magic. And this, this is why I like looking at, at say, uh, fairy tales. And yeah. Especially like taking the names of D&D creatures and then investigating their real life origins is so fun. Because if you ever have the chance to read through Men and Treasure from uh, one of the three, uh, booklet two of the original three Little Brown books, you'll see that like, there's <laughs> there's very little information given about what most of these creatures are in the first version of Dungeons and Dragons, mm -hmm. uh, and I, and I'm not talking about first edition. I'm talking about the original, you know, um, original D and D. And so a goblin really re <laughs> refers you to chainmail to see what their combat abilities are, <laughs> and it is basically like they get a penalty to attack in sunlight, and they have one minus one hit die, which is like roll a d6 and subtract one. And they have a minimum of one hit hit point, and so there are these 
uh, in original edition, they are uh, them and kobolds are, are pretty much the same. Kobolds tend to have like half hit points, but they don't really define them. They don't really tell you what they are. It's up to the dungeon master to sort of figure that out. But over the editions, as people ha- ask questions like, what's a goblin? And these things became more and more codified. And then that first uh, sort of generation of D&D players went on to become uh, video game designers and writers and, and storytellers in our in the other media. I think the distinctions and what a goblin is becomes uh, calcified. Same with like orcs, trolls, dragons, yeah. all of these things. Uh, this is how it happens. And the goblin, because it's low level, uh, you know, easy to kind of uh, just throw, throw an encounter or something like that out there, it, it's one of those that a lot of people have experienced. And a lot of people experience it as a boring yawn, you know, mm-hmm. monster that doesn't really evoke terror or wonder or or anything like that so uh yeah that, that's that's why we're talking about it because we're hopefully i don't know i, I just i love them right i love well, them they're they're little they're, they're like first off like how many little little bitty monster guys can you like think of they're all over the place right mm-hmm. like there's so many things you could call a goblin um and so in that sense they're they're very iconic Oh yeah. yeah, definitely. I'm sorry, but when I like I think about goblins, I think about gremlins. Yeah. Because I'm yeah, sorry, so, but they're goblins. Yeah. They're they're mischievous little shits <laughs> that they can kind of talk. <laughs> right, yeah. But they're gonna be annoying, but they can be very dangerous in large groups. Yeah, yes. Um yeah. and so, you know, just these tiny little big floppy eared green men. Yeah. Uh, which then of course leads me to the belief that is Baby Yoda a goblin? Ooh. I'm just saying. Well, the Gamorians are orcs. I'm just then saying. The Yodas have to be goblins. The Yodas yeah, or the yeah, Tridactyls or whatever, <laughs> right. that, whatever you want to call them. Um, I don't know what they're since called. they're not since it's not supposed to be called Baby Yoda. Uh, Who said that? Uh, John Favreau. He what wrote an he, email to Bob Iger and said, "Don't know? call it that. It's what the child. It's the asset. Well, it's like we'll give us a name for him." What does Werner call it? He, he he just he just loves it. I don't know the baby. The baby. <laughs> I want to see the baby. Anyway, um, yeah, that's we need, we'll do a whole episode on the Mandalorian. Like goblins can be like any kind of little thing that gets into a village mm-hmm, and like mm-hmm. sours the milk or yep. steals the calves. Yep. The newborn calves uh-huh. or farm animals or chickens. I mean, it's just foxes and wolves. Yeah. But mm-hmm. if you never see them really. It's the it's oh goblins got to be goblins yeah you can either like dig deep into their fairy origins right and yeah. I think that's very fun and very interesting and if you are uh, interested in something like that uh, the the denim tracks uh, which are these uh, set of uh, documents written in the mid eighteen hundreds that oh, really go into like all of the English fairies and folk beliefs and the like really fun oh okay I thought uh, the denim tracks was like a Canadian cover band no nah, I don't I yeah I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> there's an H in there uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And so, um, it, it's a, it's a, as an archetype, as a monster, they're really fun. But as, in D and D, the way they're presented is very, is often not. And so, I think like, of all of the monsters I can think of, they are one of the one of the top ones where the promise of them, the, the mythology around them, is so rich and so terrifying, and yet very often the execution isn't so yeah uh, cowardly little green things yeah cowardly little green things that you know that you can kill in a couple of hits and don't require a lot of thought to to fight them and and the like and and i think like some of that is just the way that uh you know beginning dms use beginning monsters for beginning players and it's just that because that's a lot of people's experiences they have this reputation but you know I, there's no way that you're have to be holden to that you know you could have them well, you have to be all kinds of things. So I'm curious, like, what are what are your thoughts on goblins? Like, beyond the gremlin, I love goblins as a as a monster. I try to use them all the time because, yeah. like you said, when you dig into the fairy tale of it, I mean, they can be anything. You just need to slap, like, think of one ability and slap it on them. One thing that I constantly think about is the time that you threw the fire goblins at us, mm. and you just kind of told us they were kind of red tinged. And, you know, I was like, oh, so red goblins, okay, whatever, yeah. let's go kill them. And yeah. it turns out, when you do, they explode. They explode. Because yeah, they, they've been drinking all this shit. Yeah, they've been and drinking so all It was a great wrinkle 
<laughs> and it makes you go, oh shit, I don't want to get anywhere near those things. Right, right, right. And it's right, the first right. time goblins are like running up to me trying to attack me and I'm like, this is weird, but I'll go with it until I kill the first one. Until you kill the first one, you realize that their armor's covered in like flint and so your <laughs> weapons are screaming like sparks and their yeah. blood's going to catch them. Yeah, I, that was the fun. I really like that was... <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, so that's that's like sort of one. I, I, I like playing up the craftiness of a goblin. I, <laughs> you know, I know that kobolds get a lot of the attention of, of being inventors and artificers and things like that, but honestly, in, in most of my games, there's functionally no difference between kobolds and goblins. Like yeah, they, it's they, just what the locals call them? Yeah, it's just what the locals call them. Do these goblins stick around in mines and, and you know, hang out in caves and mines and, and do their thing? Then they're probably called the kobolds. Do these goblins hang out in forests and in swamps and things like that? Then who knows what they call them? Little buggers. You know, you know swamp devils. Yeah, so yeah, whoever, who knows? Like, this, the other thing with this is, and this is a blanket rule for pretty much any D&D monster, is the less you call it by its monster manual name, the, the more evocative you will create it. Just like stop calling your monsters by their monster manual name mm-hmm. and, and just describe them or just, you know, come up with a folk name for them or better yet, let the players after a couple of run-ins with them, give them their own name. Uh, and yeah. that's, that's sort of, that's sort of like the baseline level of, 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 of like how to start begin building a more mystery to them. But, um, yeah, I, I don't really uh, differentiate between kobolds and goblins. And so I like to mix and match different bits, uh, sort of from them. But the bottom line for me is that they're devious. They're tricky. They will, uh, they know they're small. They know they're at the bottom of the ladder in terms of like the dungeon, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, uh, pecking order hierarchy. Yeah, they may be on the first level, but they're still at the bottom. Right. Of the ladder. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so, uh, thinking about them in terms of like, all right, you are a, um, you're a scrawny little goblin person that, uh, you know, pretty much has been picked on and abused your whole life. We are in this for this sense. We're, we're assuming that they're monsters and villainous and all that good stuff. Uh, maybe they were, maybe they, like the art, like the talk article suggests. Maybe they were created in a factory. Uh, my some of my goblins are, um, and they they are there to confound the players. And I like them for low level because you can throw tricks. And, and, and sort of obstacles and things at the party. And because goblins are mischievous and like cruel, but not necessarily like bloodthirsty, like gnolls or orcs or something, right, right, yeah. you can have it be that they're not there to kill the party. They're there to rob them. They're there to, yeah. uh, you know, use them, uh, uh, you know, humiliate them just to prove their superiority. You know, mm-hmm. they're, they are there to uh, try to recruit the party to go take care of a larger monster. Uh, that the goblins can't deal with. They're, they, uh, they offer a humanoid enemy that the party can still interact with and talk to, and it makes a bit more plausible sense. And that's how I've used goblins for, for such a long time, where mm-hmm. they're, you can talk to them. You probably, they might know something you, you, that you would find useful, or they collect a lot of weird stuff. Maybe they've got something to trade. Like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's, that, that's a, a, common, <laughs> a common thing, is they always love little shinies. Little shinies, yeah. yeah. They're scavengers and, yeah. and pickers and things like that. Jawas, even, oh, uh, yeah. while we're on the uh, subject. Uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> It's a, it's a chance for something different. And if you find yourself with goblin fights that are very boring, very rote, then I like that's, you have a lot of control as a dungeon master to change that situation. Yeah, don't just throw two d six goblins at the party. Yeah, in they, a field. Yeah, yeah, and and this is why having something if you are going to have, uh, uh, you know, a dungeon crawl or something with random encounters is a way to impart context to mm-hmm. the encounter. Uh, that's partially why a reaction roll does. Right, right. How willing are these are these particular uh, monsters willing to talk, fight, flee, whatever? Uh, but also something like a "What are these monsters up to?" table can be really fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, so how how do you how do you have your goblins gobbo? How do I have them like? gobble? Yeah. <laughs> I have them gobble by gambling, uh, uh, drawing crude pictures and graffiti on the dungeon walls by sleeping and messing with their fellows. You know, while, mm-hmm. uh, I have them walking around in groups griping about how much they hate their orc overlords. Or I have them all uh, peeing in uh, water skins to, in order to play a prank on another dungeon denizen or something like. Yeah. Leaving <laughs> water skins everywhere <laughs> right, in a dungeon know. that doesn't have any water sources. <laughs> right. Yeah. 
yeah. they're there to, you know maybe they're out resetting traps you know or oh, yeah, yeah. or cleaning up the dungeon right like maybe you encounter the goblins and they're like the cleanup crew they've got they're herding like a gelatinous cube in a certain direction mm-hmm. with like meat on a stick over it and like trying to get it someplace specific or like plucking the previous adventure <laughs> out of the spike trap <laughs> right, so right. They, somebody can actually <laughs> fall in and be hurt by it yeah yeah things like that you know mm-hmm. they're if they live in the dungeon then then they're sort of adapted to it but maybe Just the janitors yeah they're the caretakers the janitors the 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 ones that everyone picks on um uh, you know Col- again that's blurring the line between kobold and goblin but come on you're not if you never use their names then your players never need to have to know that they're fighting all different kinds of creatures if you mm-hmm. just always sort of describe them uh, by their characteristics only mm-hmm. um and so yeah I, I like having them for that and then when they do when there is a fight you know they they're small scrawny creatures that why are they fighting to the death why 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 are they fighting at all for one yeah, right, you, know. Mean, <laughs> you know if you only have a few goblins they see some adventurers come in like maybe not armed to the teeth but armed pretty well oh, armed pretty well probably armed better than they are yeah. and bigger and yeah why would they go after them yeah especially evenly up. matched it's kind of one of those things where i i know that D has its you know they, they present adventures the way that they do because they're so classic or or just expected but the sort of evenly matched by goblins first or second level fight it really i think contributes to a lot of that impression of them being is just we don't need to pay attention to these. Just like, are these even beings? Can they, you know, um, don't have them do that. Like, why are they fighting fair? Why are they fighting against even odds? Why aren't they running away to get allies or leading the party through the Home Alone style trap filled maze <laughs> that they've got? Or, uh, you know, why aren't they pelting the party with a uh, scent from a larger monster during mating season so that the party now has to deal with like increased chances of dealing with trolls or chimeras yeah. or something like that, you know? Yeah, pelting them with, with all of a sudden they're getting hit with these things that aren't doing damage. Like, they're yeah, not using what sling stones. What's that smell? Yeah, what does that smell? And then you, you hear know? a roar from deeper in the dungeon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not an angry roar. It's a Randy <laughs> roar. Oh, yeah. That. <laughs> Yikes. Um, <laughs> it's the player's worst nightmare. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's time to get out. Yeah, it's, it's definitely time to get out of there. Uh, so so that, yeah, that's like, kind of the thing about yeah, it. Yeah, like hit and run tactics. I mean, like that's what I love about um, uh, Keith... Um, uh, uh, Keith Amon, yeah, what the monsters know. Yeah, yeah. The monsters know what they're doing. The yeah. monsters know what they're doing. Yeah. I was reading that, and it's like, yeah, hit and run tactics with goblins. That's how you do that. Yeah, they yeah. They can attack, move, and hide all in the same round. Why aren't they attacking, moving, and, and hiding, hiding all in the same round? And, and fighting, from, fighting, fighting in an environment that facilitates that. Yeah. So forests caves, swamps, anywhere where there is cover yeah. all around them. And this Anything, is yeah, broken line of sight. A broken line of sight. And this isn't even just like say specific to 5th edition. This is pretty much any edition or any fantasy game in general. It's like they're small. The you know, the party ideally never knows how many of them there are mm-hmm. in any given encounter. Yeah. That they only ever reveal themselves in twos and threes just to pop out, fire an arrow, throw a flaming oil you know, pull a trigger or a trap trigger or something and then run away. And, and you know, you've got to work to corner them. They do not fight one-on-one, stand up. Like, why would they? You know? Yeah. The tiny little <laughs> scrawny, <laughs> cowardly <laughs> little fucks. Right. You know, that's why you bring terriers. You know, that's why you bring a small but vicious dog into the dungeon mm-hmm. because you need to go in there and get those goblins out. Yeah, you <laughs> root them out with your dire dachshunds. Yeah, your dire dachshunds, your goblin hounds. In that sense, as, as minions, as, as sort of like dungeon fodder, um, it, they deserve some thought. Like having them just mm-hmm. be there and, and be like, you know, this is the fight you're supposed to have, so have this fight. No, like, give them some life. It's up to you to breathe uh, life into the encounters that you have and, mm-hmm. and the enemies that you choose. Now, now, when it comes to, like, goblins in a fight, though, are they all, do they have to just be minions? I don't think so. Certainly not. Yeah. You know, no, they don't. Right? And, and, you know, you get far enough, you get to goblin kings and goblin bosses. And uh, what I really like about original D&D is it kind of reveals... The uh, some curious things about later versions of D and D. We've got our own goblin in the next room, uh, and so one of those things that I this is going to seem like a weird tangent to you guys, but Pruitt and I are having a conversation. You guys are just privy to it. Exactly, uh, is that there used to be this thing in 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 uh, first edition where it was like giant class enemies, and yeah. rangers got a bonus versus giant class enemies, and yeah. I and it included things like orcs and kobolds and goblins and the like. And I, for years, I wondered, like, what's going on there? 
what's happening? So curiously enough, you go back to the original game, you notice a progression of humanoids that goes up from kobold to like storm or cloud giant. And they, uh, as you look at the, the descriptions of the monsters, it'll say something like, well, a, you know, the Goblin King fights as a hobgoblin and has uh, bodyguards who also fight as hobgoblins. And then you get to hobgoblin, it goes, well, the, you know, the hobgoblin chieftain fights as a bugbear. And you notice that there's a progression of humanoids, and they're just people-shaped monsters <laughs> from kobold to giants. Walk on two legs. Walk two on two arms. legs, and yeah. they all are classified as sort of like giant class uh, sort of creatures uh, in that sense. And you realize that goblin and kobold are just the bottom rung of that, uh, but that they fit into this hierarchy of humanoids that progresses from kobold, goblin, orc, gnoll, hobgoblin, bugbear, mm -hmm. up to troll, and the like. So. Yeah. I, I think thinking of them in that sense and going like, okay, a big, like a goblin boss, I can use a larger humanoid reskinned as just a big goblin. You know, just a, yeah. the toughest, beefiest, <laughs> nastiest goblin. <laughs> and, and if you had to grow up through being a goblin up to that, you're yeah. probably kind of a badass. You probably are. You're probably you just vicious. That? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you survive that kind of uh, sort of like vicious, sort of cutthroat environment, and whether they're spawned in the slime pits, uh, uh, you know, in the depths of the earth or created by uh, inflicting massive amounts of pain and trauma on halflings and just creating your own goblins. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting way, like, like perverting or cursing smaller races like gnomes yeah. or halflings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and you know, those are uh, various ways they can come out. Maybe they are, uh, you know, creatures that came from the fairy realms and have, have stuck around, or they've come from somewhere else, the shadow realms or hell. Mm -hmm. or having them be the unexpected power behind the scenes, mm -hmm. right? You normally expect an orc or a bugbear or something oh, yeah. like that. Yeah, or orc or bug, you know, like a hobgoblin tactician or, mm -hmm. or a hag that's leading them or something. Um, but, you know, to, to sort of be re reveal yourself as like in the, the presence of the Goblin King, where it's sort of like flabs and, and uh, just like a grotesque physique. Oh, yeah, They're like just the, big, the Hobbit, yeah. <laughs> like in The Hobbit. Or, uh, you know, I, I know we've mentioned him before on the show, but one of my favorite like old school Warhammer iconics, I'm not sure if, well, I actually don't think he's still around at all, but Grom the Paunch. Yep, Grom the, the Goblin Paunch. just ate a troll. And just kept getting bigger. <laughs> Kept getting bigger. Yeah. Or maybe maybe just one of the goblins one day found a helm of brilliance. Yeah. Put it on, and now he's the leader because he's later, he's he comes up helmet. with all the plans. Uh -huh. The shiny helmet put, gets, has the plans. Yeah, shiny helmet's got the plans. He uh, uses the words good. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's that. It's uh, Maybe it's uh, someone entirely different. You go with, like say, a more uh, labyrinth interpretation of the goblin, and Goblin King is more of a, a fairy type. Uh, figure, sort of mm -hmm. like, think, think of the Earl King from uh, The Wild Hunt, someone that is primal and uh, and dangerous in and of themselves, but not necessarily wicked. Yeah. Trixie, a, a Loki type figure would be another mm -hmm. good one for like a goblin boss. Yeah, the but, fickle vengeance of nature itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or it could be, you know, that these goblins are there, you know, the goblins are sort of uh, every, an everyman minion, you know, it could yeah, be yeah. that the dryads uh, of the glade are uh, you know, use the goblins uh, from nearby caves as you know uh, people that protect them, and to, you know they frolic in the fairy ring occasionally. And you know, on a moonless night, uh, if you know the right uh, words, they'll let you into the goblin market, and that's where you can find all kinds of things like uh, childhood tears and nightmares of dying people. Oh and, yeah, well, all, <laughs> all those shady spell components, and all things, those shady ritual spell components, components yep. and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need something nefarious translated, then the goblin market is a place for that. And you know, in order to get to the goblin market, you either have to to make with the nice for the Goblin King, or you know, find a way to sneak in. And um, it's gonna be kind of hard to do though, because they're pretty sneaky. <laughs> they are pretty sneaky, yeah. Um, so in that sense, I you know, using them as more than just minions can be fun. Giving them a place in the world, giving them a function, a, a mythological niche to fill. And if that's the tricky sort of sneaky, we we steal children and replace them with changelings, or we we uh, you know we take your hopes and dreams uh, in the night uh, kind of thing, then then it you owe it to like investigate that further and really um, plant things in your campaign world that will reward the players pulling on that string. So if it starts as them as being these tricky fairy creatures or something like that, then the next step is where do they live? Where do they dwell? How can we get to them? 
And then on their turf, it's a different matter. Maybe there are certain rules you have to follow or uh, you know, things just work differently uh, when they're around or when you're in their lair or something because they're so fundamentally at odds with reality that it's just different. You know? mm -hmm. The angles work differently or certain magic is enhanced or, or maybe everybody just feels an impulse to, to do something that is represented by a temporary flaw or drawback or something right, right. to represent their more magical nature that's not like, again, it's not overt, it's not overpowering, it's not like debilitating, it colors the encounter or the location. Mm -hmm. you know, everybody knows when you deal with goblins, you gotta be careful, because you're likely to get really frustrated and like really angry, and, and that's, just a f you know, that's just the goblin messing with you without really knowing it. You know, they just have that effect, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, what, it's what they like. Um, I also like thinking of goblins, uh, like all goblins having like a burrow speed. Yeah, because of their their goblin burrows and tunnels and uh -huh. being able to just yep. down and they're under the ground and out of it. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Especially if you're reskinning goblins mm -hmm. and and there's so many different ways to to reskin them. But one of my favorite is to reskin them as vermin people. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, you know, they are rat people. They're uh, you know little shrew or mole people. They're they subterranean and uh, chthonic even. They're just. Mm -hmm down there. The One Punch Man episode with the oh, Mole King who tries to run away and there's just, there's Saitama in the middle of nowhere. There's something also fun about just, like if I just go digging, there's just gonna be a weird monster. It's not a worm or a bug or something like that. It's a person that's just in the ground. Mm -hmm. and, and they love it. And they just <laughs> love it, yeah. Uh, but that's how you have to find them in the middle of the day because you know, that's where they sleep. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you, gotta, you, you have to use their, their advantages uh, in, in, in the right place, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, they, they wait for them to come down into the dark. Yes. Find a way to snuff that torch. Yeah. Then they attack. Then know? they attack, yeah. And so thinking about it in terms like that, of like going on their, their turf, their lair, um, you know. I mean, what does your goblin lair look like? Oh, man. My goblin lair looks like a, um, well, it's a lot like a, a kobold lair or something like that. If it's in a dungeon, then, um, and it's not a dungeon built f uh, of small size, uh, you know, for them, then they're inhabiting spaces that are uh, designed and built for beings bigger than them, which means that I see them as very much modifying those spaces to be more convenient for them, making it inconvenient for, uh, you know, larger folk. Mm -hmm. So a goblin warren that's, um, you know, that's fortified and protected, something that I might put on like the first or second level of a dungeon as a feature that it's like you guys can tackle it whenever you want, but you'd probably be better off around fifth or sixth level cracking that nut. Because <laughs> yeah. it's, it's things like, um, you know, the front gate being protected by multiple, uh, like, murder holes or peep holes that they can fire crossbows out of or, or dump burning oil onto the party. Uh, it would feature things like traps within traps. So the, the classic one for me is the pit trap that has a secret door in it. Mm -hmm. uh, so that you've fallen in the pit trap, you've you know, taken some damage, maybe there's like a debilitating poison, and then all of a sudden like a piece of the wall slides open and it's three or four goblins with spears stabbing at you while you're yeah. trying to get out of the pit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Except also they're in the ceiling as well, firing down Arrows at you. Down. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's things like that. They've, they've altered their environment to to take advantage of the fact that they're slow, maybe the uh, you know the traps that they have that are right in the beginning of their lair are designed to do things like snuff out torches, to uh, to debilitate or hinder or harm the party, um, caltrips, uh, trip wires, uh, you know, getting everybody soaking wet. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, those are all things that uh, that you can do that can inconvenience and annoy. And then it's like they harass the party from afar, slings and crossbows and the use of uh, pets or attack animals, things like that, drawing in larger monsters to, uh, to the fight, making a lot of noise and then running away. Oh, it's yeah. a really <laughs> fun thing to do. Because <laughs> they know right down the hallway there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a reason they built their, uh, their lair two doors down from the troll who, uh, you know, they can keep quiet, but you're not, gonna, you're not that quiet. Like, maybe like a bigger room is filled with garbage and junk and they've just got like tunnels dug through this massive combat hoarders pile you know that's all rusted blades and poison and and, and the like and they're you know rat-like creatures that they use for pets or running about and 
and you know it, it's you know if you, if you get too far in they're just going to knock this pile of stuff over on top of you you know mm-hmm. it's 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 things like that they getting to a point where you can uh get them in melee <laughs> should be very difficult and that means knowing if you're playing with like a grid or something knowing very much like where the ranges are how how far they can see versus the party um you know what are the rules for you know moving and you know performing an action and then the moving uh, you know and the like staying out of combat yeah yeah um, those are all things you want to be familiar with but in most versions of fantasy RPGs like if you keep your distance and kite um, you, that's a viable strategy I, I think it's one of those where if you use it too often you frustrate your players but I think this is appropriate you know yeah well that's how they stay alive yeah I mean they're not. You know, they're not smart, smart, but they're not completely dumb. Yeah, yeah, they're intelligent in the sense that they that they have a you know, sort of awareness of their surroundings, but, you know, especially if you're not using them as, like, another culture, mm-hmm. uh, then, then yeah, as monsters, they should be smart enough and, and present a tricky, uh, you know, sort of encounter, but, uh, you know, not necessarily one that's meant to overwhelm. You know, yeah. if they were here to wipe you out, they'd be different kind of monsters. Yeah. They're protecting themselves. You have your goblin tunnel. Oh yes. You have your you have your different versions of it. Yeah, um, it's in a swamp. And, and we've kind of talked about tactics yeah. a yeah. bit. Um, oh. But what is your favorite like off the wall like, <laughs> like version of goblin? Okay, yeah, we're doing, like the real yeah the real brain fuel here. So I my favorite version of goblins comes from a blog called uh, Goblin Punch. And Goblin Punch is run by a guy, uh, Arnold K, and just it's one of those where I try to visit it every few weeks because it's it's absolutely amazing. And he has a type of goblin called Yoblins. And I first off, I love a goblin that does, that replaces the G with something else. Yeah. You know, uh, and and a lot of my uh, homebrew goblins are basically based off of what can I combine with goblin to make a weirder word? Yeah. Uh, so uh, are you his, imagining it, hobbers, right, hoblin. Right, really focus on caltrips right. and trip wires. <laughs> and <laughs> so uh, goblin punch yoblins uh, really roped me in because they're these creatures that were made by a specific sorcerer in this guy's uh, homebrew world. And this sorcerer created a race of fungal beings which are the Yoblins. They have a strong association with fungus and mold and things like that. Mm. And they are, as a magically created being uh, or or race, they have uh, certain instructions from this sorcerer imprinted on them. Uh, Except this sorcerer was slain, you know, hundred centuries and centuries ago. So every, uh, at night, every Yoblin has the same three dreams. They have a dream of being created and of, of this uh, sorcerer sort of in, imparting instructions, you are my creations, you'll be the warriors I do X, Y, Z with, conquer the world, that kind of thing. They have a dream of, of, of the same sorcerer sort of like preparing for supposedly their ultimate conquest. And then their final dream is of uh, a vision of, of a castle or fortress burning, falling to the ground, of being screamed at by the sorcerer, of being told that they're at fault for everything and they'll never rest. You know, this uh, sort of traumatic kind of uh, uh, nightmare that they have every night. And so um, in this world, sometimes the goblins just pop up, right? They're, they're a type of, of, of uh, mold. And so you get infested with them. But it just is this... Uh, it's this. It's the little details of it because the way it presents them is like there are people who know that they have these dreams, and instead of killing them, they try to like help them adjust. Mm-hmm. And there are people who are like, yeah, it doesn't matter. We don't care. Like it's everywhere they show up, they do the same things. They start building weapons of war. They start, uh, rec- you know, making more of themselves and outfitting themselves with weapons. It's it's baked into their DNA uh, like through magic. Yeah. Literally, like we can't let them survive. And so it just it it. It's an attempt to answer the why are they inherently evil question, which I, I like. I like at least attempts to address that. It addresses sort of the, uh, the weirdness element of it, right? Why are they everywhere? Why are they weird? Mm-hmm. And I just like the story of it. It's just interesting. Of course, the blog in, in general has a lot of great uh, stuff to take and use and twist for your own game. But that got me thinking a lot about the idea of created beings. Yeah, yeah. And in D&D, there's mad wizards and everything that, that make all kinds of, uh, of creatures, owl bears being kind of the uh, quintessential mm-hmm. example. But think of them in terms of goblins. I think of things like, yeah, if, if like... If drow represent the dark mirror to elves, if dwergar are that for dwarves, if orcs are that for humanity, 
than goblins and halflings, kobolds and gnomes, maybe, you know? Yeah. Especially like goblins and halflings. Definitely I really goblins like. and kinder. So remember Magog from uh, the Castle White Rock game that uh, Tomlin became friends with yep. and was this sort of goblin warlock that lived out in the middle of nowhere and gave the party ranger a mains uh, demon as just a buddy. Just like, yeah, we did, take this buddy. Yeah, the rest of the party <laughs> never didn't like him, but no. Audie's character, Tomlin, and she, she, she loved, loved that. him. She lo- yeah, he really, yeah, loved him. Tomlin loved that little... Uh, so we didn't do anything with him, yep. but <laughs> God damn it, I wanted to. Right. Um, and so in that sense that, you know, uh, I... I um, that was sort of the first time that I made the connection between, like, halflings and goblins. Describe this hermit warlock's goblin hole, which was a lot like a hobbit hole, but instead of being filled with nice and cozy, warm things. It was filled with like gross things, but also had a sense of warmth mm-hmm. and comfort because they're still hobbits uh, it's somewhere. They're, they're still this uh, homebody comfort kind of uh, instinct. Well, except I mean, It's very Lord of the Rings in that way. Yeah. With, with- you know, Smeagol. Sure, yeah, so. exactly. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, Smeagol uh, that I, I drew inspiration from there. And that was, to me, that sort of, that campaign marked a beginning where I was like, you know what, I am i don't want the vanilla fantasy stuff in my D&D worlds. I want every time I present one of these iconic uh, monsters, I want it to be specific to this world yeah. and specific to the setting. And so... I've done things where goblins are fairies. They're, they are either fake creatures in and of themselves or they are been adopted uh, by the fairies. Um, I like goblins as demons, you know? I like, I, you know, especially if you give them something like, uh, you know, in fifth edition, I might give them like shadow melt. In, in dim light or darkness, they have advantage to stealth or something like yeah, that, yeah. you know? Um, or even like a limited uh, shadow jaunt. Like they can, you know, hop or something yeah, like that. Yeah, you're, you're in a dark, sh- shadowy room and they're just everywhere, but yeah. there's only a couple of them. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, you, you never really know, but they, they seem like they're coming from all over the place. Uh, so goblins as demons are another uh, fun one there, especially uh, a, a twist on that, that that I like is goblin as sin eater, right? So if you take goblin as the sort of mischievous, vicious little creature, then maybe they... Uh, eat the sin of dead people. And, and in that sense, they perform a service for good, but they themselves take on all this wickedness. Yeah. And, you and are what you eat. You are what you eat, and, and, and therefore they, are, uh, they, they help others, but they're also a nuisance and a threat. You, can't, mm. you need them, but you don't want them around, and so like, maybe the church has to corral them and keep them from getting too out of hand, but also, you know, you you can't kill them all. You can't kill them all because you need a few (laughs) sin eaters around, you know. Uh, (laughs) You can get your hunting pass. You're allowed to kill 10 gobblos every hunting season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And then the the one that I've I've settled on now for for my worlds, uh, um, especially the land between two rivers and the like, is that most humanoid races are uh, magically created that the the proliferation of humanoid uh, humanoids in a typical DNA world in this world represents efforts by archmages and sorcerer kings and all other kinds of uh, of high level uh, magic users to create soldiers servitors uh, and so they they all go by the generic name thrall they're just thralls um, and so like gladiator thralls might be bugbears or gnolls or something like that mm-hmm. uh, servitor thralls might be kobolds goblins whatever and then because they're created uniquely they're all bespoke and individualized and they just look like whatever yeah, uh, right, sometimes right. they look like uh, <laughs> you know the uh, um, in you know, like sort of Blade Runner, that scene where they finally get to the uh, the sort of the end, and they're they're finding the uh, the replicants, and they get to the the guy's workshop, right? And there's yeah, all the these little house. toys yep. and other things running around. It's like that, right? So it's like they might look like tiny toy soldiers with fox faces, mm-hmm. or they might be grumpy frog people, yeah. or they might be exact tiny replicas of this wizard, all of them, mini me's. Yeah, just little mini. <laughs> you know, like, mini genes. yeah, each one of them's different, but they're all basically the same. They're all like tiny little things. Mm-hmm. And then that also brings in some uh, lore from like the fairies, because if they're say servitor thralls, then they're meant to kind of keep up the house. Uh, or, a, or you know, whatever domicile that, uh, that they're a part of. So if that wizard dies, then those magically created beings 
are still around performing their function. They're not going to let you in this wizard's tower. They got to mm-hmm. protect it. The master could return at any time. At any time. At any time. You know. And so, like, I I like leaning on that. And of course, then I also in the same worlds have just straight up goblins that are just straight up goblins. Yeah. Uh, and in our, uh, I believe in our goblinoid episode, I kind of described them as you know they're born in clutches. They, uh, you know, a clutch of twenty will devour each other until there's two or three left. Mm-hmm. Those are then taken, and eventually they'll be sent to a hobgoblin camp because goblins never stop growing. And yeah. hence you get bugbears, eventually ogre-sized goblins. The big goblin is yeah. what, is what uh, I'm always aiming for. Oh, yeah. Mean, the like, big like goblin. These guys. Yeah, 30 foot tall, <laughs> just a giant goblin. For me, it's just a, a, a good solid goblin fight. Yeah. It should just be like fantasy fucking... Vietnam. Just like fans from Vietnam. Right? Like, <laughs> just you're in the bush, yeah. in the shit, you hear them, mm-hmm. you see the arrows fly in, and when you get to the, where they came from, there's yeah. nothing. There's nothing, yeah. There's burrows, yeah. and there's, there's switchbacks underground. Uh-huh. Yeah, like it should, it, like you said, it should endlessly frustrate your players. Yeah, yeah. But God, they have the treasure that you need. They have the treasure that you need, yeah. And it's like, if you can't get them the first time, then it might be time to come back with more firepower or, or approach some, it from a different some way. some dogs or some henchmen. Yep, smoke them out. Uh, yeah, but like they are little tiny scrawny monsters. Like don't, they're not going to fi- straight up fight. That just, that does not speak to their self sense of self-preservation. Yeah. I see, they're not zealots. Know. They're cowards. Right. They're cowards, people. You have Come to on. think about that that way. Yeah. <laughs> Besides, you know, like maybe you, and, and the other thing is like, if you're looking to get into that and break into that goblin warren, you can always use that against them. Don't approach them aggressively. Yeah, use buy them Use deviousness off. yourself. If that's the kind of game you're playing, then buy them off. Hire them. Yeah. You know? Hey, we're having, we're going to have a feast here. You're invited. You're invited, yeah. I mean, yeah. having goblins over to the feast is not smart. It's no, they're probably Gonna, they're probably going to try to get you drunk and attract a monster so that yeah. they can steal your stuff. <laughs> yeah. But you might be able to get the drop on them first. Yeah. And that's how you inject role-playing into your dungeon crawling. So, boom. What more you want? <laughs> if you like the video, please like, subscribe, and go ahead and ring that bell to get those notifications. The Web DM exists thanks to our Patreon patrons, the, the Web, Web Demons. Demons. If you join the Web Demons, you'll get our weekly podcast, show audio, discounts that'll save you way more than $5 a month on books and dice, and so much more. Check out our free podcast episodes right now, including our free interview with Luke Gygax about all things D&D. If you like our advice for your games, then why don't you come check us out and watch us play? Yeah, head on over to our second YouTube channel, Web DM Plays, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Uh, 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 oh, this world of force! Oh, it's so much. It's, it, you can go around it! Oh. <laughs> uh, here we are. Yes, we will live as kings. We will live as two kings. Two kings. Or even two princes. What about a duke? You would be a kick ass duke. I could be a duke. Yes, I would, they call me Duke. Duke Goblin Vigorous Rex. And I'll bestride the keep and castle towers of this small, insignificant wall. Look at it, it doesn't even have, it's just a wall that's bent. You could take the other three sides quite easily. And this large fellow right here, and this giant I, I dropped seems my to live sword. here with his friend. We will kill you in the night and take your things. We are goblins. Piss on your kingship. Besides, uh, we have two giants. Mm-hmm. Look at these massive giants that we can use to crush you with. Yes, very good. 